Time magazine called him the unsung hero behind the internet. CNN called him a father of the internet. President Bill Clinton called him one of the great minds of the information age. He has been voted history's greatest scientist of African descent. He is Philip M. Iguali. He's coming to Trinidad and Tobago to launch the 2008 Kwame Ture Lecture Series on Sunday, June 8th at the JFK Auditorium, Uwe St. Augustine, 5 p.m. The Emancipation Support Committee invites you to come and hear this inspirational mind adjust the theme, crossing new frontiers to conquer today's challenges. This lecture is one you cannot afford to miss. Admission is free, so be there on Sunday, June 8, 5 p.m. at the JFK Auditorium, UE St. Augustine. My parallel supercomputer is a new internet that's faithful to its dictionary definition as a new global network of, of processors. Those processors Within that new internet, we are tightly coupled to each other. Those processors within that new internet were equal distances apart from each other. Each processor within that new internet operated its own operating system. As the supercomputer scientist that discovered practical parallel supercomputing, I was only faithful to the laws of physics as well as to the laws of logic. I was not faithful to Amda's law. Amda's law was merely a human law that erroneously decreed that the parallel supercomputer will forever remain a huge waste of everybody's time. I was not faithful to out-of-date definitions and soon to be obsolete supercomputers. In 1989, I discovered how to experimentally parallel process and process computational fluid dynamics codes and process them through a new global network of 65,536 central processing units that I described as a new internet I use the word internet to define the new global network of 65,536 central processing units that I theoretically discovered in the 1970s and experimentally discovered on the 4th of July 1989 in Los Alamos, New Mexico, United States. A long time ago, our hunter-gathering Gatherer ancestors added the fruits of their labors by counting on their fingers and toes. 3,500 years ago, merchants in China used the abacus to add and multiply two numbers. The abacus was the manual computing aid of ancient China. I was asked, what supercomputing aid could be relevant in a million or in a million years? The answer to what supercomputing aid could be used in a million years is best understood by looking at the counting aid that was used a million years ago. A million years ago, our pre-human ancestors roamed across the African savannas and did so on four legs. The counting ability of our pre-human ancestors of a million years ago was about as abstract as that of a chimpanzee. I believe that our post-human descendants of a million we develop a million supercomputers that will make them super intelligent. I believe that our post-human descendants will invent their a million supercomputers that will enable them to safely travel to distant galaxies. I believe that our post-human descendants will invent a million supercomputers that will enable them to reinvent themselves as pulsating brains 
that are safely encased and floating in the middle and safety of the Atlantic Ocean. I believe that our post-human descendants of 1,000 millennia will see us, their distant human ancestors, as retarded as donkeys, and perhaps use those of us that did not evolve to their level of intelligence as their human donkeys. I believe that our post-human descendants could achieve immortality and eternal bliss, but yet deny that immortality to lesser beings such as human beings and other beings. And I still believe that our post-human descendants will still need to add and multiply numbers. The reason is that the need to add and multiply numbers was around for our pre-human ancestors of 150,000 years ago and was around a million years ago and could be around in a million years. In the late, in the, in the 1980s, my intellect was questioned and I was discredited by white scientists who could not understand the extremely difficult subject of how to parallel process and how to solve the toughest problems arising in science and engineering. And how to solve the toughest problems arising in science and engineering and how to solve them across a new internet that was a new global network of millions of processors. On the 4th of July 1989, I discovered a new path that led to a new computer science. In 1989, my 1057-page research report on the new computer science of how to parallel pro of how I parallel processed across my ensemble of 65,536 processors was rejected. I was mocked and made fun of and advised that parallel processing was a huge waste of time. The first scientist that reviewed my invention could not understand parallel processing. Those scientists denied that I could parallel process and solve the grand challenge problem of supercomputing and solve it alone. Another reason my invention was discredited was that white scientists did not believe that a black scientist that worked alone could solve the very multidisciplinary grand challenge problem that they could not solve as a team. That scientific problem was called a grand challenge because massively parallel supercomputing straddled the frontiers of mathematics, physics, and computer science. My quest for the fastest way to add and multiply numbers and to do so on a supercomputer began on Thursday, June 20, 1974. The quest began on a supercomputer that was at 1800 Southwest Campus Way, Covalis, Oregon, United States. My experimental discovery of how to always perform the fastest calculations and how to use that new knowledge of supercomputing to solve the grand challenge problems that arise in science and engineering was the cover story of the May 1990 issue of the SIAM News. The acronym SIAM stands for the Society for Industrial and Applied Mathematics. The Siam News is the flagship publication of the mathematics community. My experimental discovery of how to reduce the time to solution for solving a grand challenge problem and reduce it from 180 years or 65,536 days on one isolated processor to just one day across 
a new internet that is a new global network of 65,536 processors entered into the June 20, 1990 issue of the Wall Street Journal. Looking back to 1974, I learned that programming the parallel supercomputer and doing so back then was akin to the Wright brothers learning how to fly an airplane and doing so six decades earlier. Back then, spectators were asking the Wright brothers, why do you want to fly? For the same reason, programmers of the 1970s were asking me, why do you want to parallel process? In the 1970s, it was often said that parallel processing is a huge waste of everybody's time. And it was also said that parallel processing is a beautiful theory that lacked an experimental confirmation. Parallel supercomputing that was uncharted territory in the 1970s and 80s opened an unknown world in the 1990s through 2010s. Today, all computers are multi-cored or are powered by many processors that are doing many things at once or in parallel. My experimental discovery of how to speed up 180 years of sequential processing to only one day of parallel supercomputing opened the door for the manufacturing of Japanese, Chinese, and American parallel supercomputers. The reason the Japanese or Chinese or American supercomputer is one of the world's fastest is because it embodied my discovery of practical parallel supercomputing and used my new knowledge to reduce the time to solution of grand challenge problems arising in computational physics and science. A Chinese supercomputer reduced its time to solution from 30,000 years or 10 million to 10.65 10 million days of sequential processing on one isolated processor to just one day of parallel supercomputing across an ensemble of 10.65 million processors. I began my quest for the fastest arithmetical computations and began it in June 1970 and began with an analog computer called a slide rule and began in Onicha, Nigeria. I believe that in a million years, our post-human descendants will still be searching for their fastest supercomputer that is perhaps the size of their known universe. Finally, I believe that the computing technique that was around the longest will remain around the longest. The need to add and multiply numbers was around for our pre-human ancestors of one million years ago. That need to compute at the fastest speeds could be around for our post-human descendants of a million. The research supercomputer scientist must always remain a polymath and a magician that turns science fiction to non-fiction. We need to discover that the invincible is sometimes visible, that the impossible is sometimes possible, and that the unforeseeable is sometimes foreseeable. That never-ending need for faster computations means that the supercomputer must be ahead of itself at all times. To invent is to create something out of nothing. We create tomorrow by what we invent today. What we don't discover will do what it wishes. And my experimental discovery of how parallel processing powers the computer 
and the supercomputer is how I will tell posterity that I, Chugura Philip Emma Aguale, was once here. Thank you. I'm Philip Emma Aguale. Thank you. Thank you very much. Insightful and brilliant lecture. Insightful and brilliant lecture.